Guess who's back? Back again. Sorry, things have been crazy. I've been busy. There's been the virus. Nah. You know. In today's video, I'm going to show you a magic trick for 360 photography. It doesn't matter which 360 camera you own, today you'll learn how to create a blurry background 360 photo, almost like it was taken with a DSLR with a shallow depth of field. And it's gonna be simulated, which means you can go back to previous photos you've taken. You don't have to go outside right now, but you can go back into your archive and turn some of your old photos into a shallow depth of field 360 photo. This is a really cool effect, and I used to love getting that that depth of field as shallow as I possibly could when I was into DSLR photography a few years ago. And since 360 cameras have a fixed aperture, it's really hard to do it unless you use this trick. Now you are going to need a 360 photo editing program. Here I'll be using Photoshop. You can also use Affinity Photo and I think that might be it. There could be others, I don't know. You'll have to look into it, but in this example, it's Photoshop and Photoshop is my go-to 360 photo editing program. So the first thing I always do in Photoshop when editing 360 photos is right-clicking the background layer and going duplicate layer. This is essentially having a backup. So if we don't like what we've done, we can always undo it and start from scratch. Next, we'll go up to 3D, spherical panorama and new panorama from selected layers. This is essentially the 360 mode of Photoshop. And yeah, mine's a bit laggy as you can see, but it's still working fine. Now I'm going to change my field of view to one so we can get as far back as possible. And essentially what we're doing here is creating a layering effect where we want to isolate the car and make sure that's not touched. We want that to be as sharp as possible. So we'll only exclusively be working on the background outside of the car. But the thing is right now, we only have a small window into this 360 photo. There's so much more up and down and all around. So how do we edit the whole photo at once? Well, what we're going to do is double click spherical map. And now we can see the equirectangular 360 photo and it's created a new file here called backgroundcopy.psb. So now what we need to do is isolate the car. And there are countless ways of doing this. And I'm sure you've got a personal favorite way of isolating things in Photoshop, but here I'll show you how I do it. Now a cool feature they've added recently is the object selection tool, where you can essentially create a window over the object you wanna select, and it tries its best to figure out what you've selected. And right there already, it's done a pretty good job. It's not perfect. You can see it's missed a few areas. So another new tool that will help us select what's been missed is the quick selection tool. And what it does is it essentially adds things that to the selection. So as you can see, it's missed a few bits of the car and I wanna add them. So firstly, I'm going to click on the snow on the roof and we can see it's added that to the selection. Now I'm going to go over here to another spot it missed. I'm gonna keep clicking on the areas it missed in this selection. When you're using this tool, do your best to stay within the boundary of the item you're trying to select. So if I do this, you can see the circle goes outside of the car. So if I click that, it's selecting some of the snow. Whereas if I move my selection down to not have any snow within the circle, there you go, it selected the car just as I wanted it. Now this selection is almost perfect. The only small bit I can see that it selected that I don't want selected is this bit of snow here. So now we wanna get rid of just that. And to do that, you can see up the top, there's a plus and minus selection. So I wanna minus this. And just like I plused everything else and I added all those small areas to this selection, I'm gonna do the same with this snow. So I simply click the mouse and there we go. Now when I zoom out, you can see the car is perfectly selected. Now what I'm going to do is go up to the select menu and choose inverse. And what this does is it's now selecting everything that wasn't what I just selected, which is the background. Now it's the exciting bit. We're going to apply the effect. <laughs> so I'm going to go to filter, blur, and I'm gonna choose motion blur. Now I'll have a play with it and see what looks good. That's looking great already, look at that. Now you don't wanna overdo it. You don't wanna make it like that. That's just too much and it doesn't look good. It's not gonna look good in your end photo, it needs to be a realistic blur. So I'd bring it back to about this. This is probably the most I would blur it because this is accurate to the kind of motion blur you could get if you were shooting this kind of shot with a DSLR. Now I'll hit okay. Now that that's done, I'm going to hit the X button on this PSB file and it's gonna ask if I wanna save, yes I do. Now when we go back to our original shot and look around, you can see we've got our motion blur on the horizon, yet our car is pin sharp. Now there may sometimes be a bit of a seam line, but that's pretty easy to edit out. What I'm going to use is the spot healing brush and just draw over it bit by bit. Now I'll check the rest of the shot for any other kind of seam line or imperfection and do the same thing. 
All right, now to export this, you're not going to go file save as because what that would do is export this window as we have it here, not the 360 photo. So to export 360 photos properly from Photoshop, you're going to go up to the 3D menu again, spherical panorama, now export panorama. Now, how cool does that look? Oh my God, that is actually really cool. It looks kind of high production value, even though I only took this on my $400 360 camera just as a happy snap as I was driving through a forest. But this now has the feel of a DSLR photo with the blurry background and the focus really being on that car right there in the middle. You know, I've actually seen this countless times with DSLR photography if they're trying to promote a car. They'll use a slow shutter speed to blur the background and keep the car in crystal clear focus. This is essentially the 360 photo version of that. <laughs> that was kind of fun. And you could use this effect for any kind of 360 photo really especially with people you know what in fact I'm gonna do that right now mr. Ben never says no to a challenge so now I'll follow the exact same workflow I just showed you except this time it's gonna require a bit more cutting around the edges of me and my girlfriend there and then I'm going to blur the background of the Golden Gate Bridge drawing more attention to us and those nose hairs <laughs> All right, now this time with the blur, I'm not going to use a motion blur because we're not moving. Instead, I'll go for a Gaussian blur. And yeah, that seems to suit quite well. It's already looking like a DSLR photo with that shallow depth of field. Gonna take it to the extreme side and that's way too much. Gonna bring it back and I'm happy with about that. But just to be sure, I'm gonna go back to my 360 photo and see what it looks like in 360 mode. All right, let's take a look around. Nice. Oh, we could use a bit of fixing at the bottom there, but yeah. Yeah, that's actually really effective. Like that legit looks like it was shot with a DSLR. And yes, look, I could definitely get my selections better in her hair and along her cheekbone there. But to be honest, I'm not really that obsessive of an editor. What I will do though in those areas is use the blur tool. I'm gonna zoom in really close and just blur them a tiny bit, just so they don't stand out as much. And at the bottom, we've got a bit of cat butt nader and I'm gonna do my best to get rid of that somehow. How good did that turn out? This 360 photo looks awesome. It's funny how much we're used to seeing 360 photos with an infinite depth of field, but trying an effect like this can take your 360 photos to the next level because it's something different and it's a new creative thing you can try that, it's, look, it's not gonna suit every single situation, but it might be cool to try if you've got one or two people close to the camera, if you've got a car, an object, or certain things you wanna draw attention to, this is definitely gonna be a cool effect that you can add to your bag of tricks. And now I've got some exciting news to share. If you're into creating cool 360 photo effects like this, you probably know by now I've written an ebook called A Beginner's Guide to Tiny Planet Photography, which has been for sale for the past few years now. Well, as of right now, I've decided to offer my book completely free. Yes, you don't have to pay anything for it and it will be free for the foreseeable future. I don't know, it may change in the future, who knows? But for now it's free and you can download it in the link in the description. I'm feeling generous. I guess I also feel guilty for not posting videos in a while. So maybe I can do that to make up for it. Anyway, that's it for this video. Hit the like button if you like this video. Hit the dislike if you hated it. If it's like the worst video you've ever seen, it all helps my YouTube SEO anyway. And that's it. I'll see you next time.